the power of prayer, fasting, and consecration. So, before I start, okay, so feel free to take notes. This is more of a, of a teaching. This is more of like, like just biblical advice. That's, that's what it is, right? Feel free to take notes. I'll send you the PDF file if you want. I have like a whole outline, and it's a lot clear. It's very clear of, of what I'm about to preach. Um, so, I want to start off. Proverbs says wisdom and understanding are far more valuable than rubies. Spiritual gems, nuggets go far beyond in value than physical gems and golden nuggets. So, wisdom and understanding, which are spiritual things, not only is it carnal, not only is it physical, like understanding and wisdom, right? Because there's worldly wisdom and then there's godly wisdom, right? Todavía diciendo que la sabiduría y el entendimiento tiene mucho más valor que posesiones físicas. Uh, son superiores lo, lo, la, sabiduría, la sabiduría que viene de Dios es mucho más um, en valor que, que cosas físicas que, que es del oro um, y también pues lo, los uh, physical uh, belongings right uh, so first of all well, let me get the mic so first of all uh, what, what is consecration qué es la consagración consecration means to be set apart from the world and its mentalities. So let's say the world says, be yourself, right? Consecrating means, you know what? I don't agree with that because that goes against what God says in the word of God, right? Um, and ways of thinking, anything that has to do with the world, right? Uh, it's possessions, it's passions, things that it offers. Passions, it always talks about the lust of the eyes, the passions of the flesh, right? Colossians says that we have crucified our passions with Christ on the cross. So anything that we have that is like a, like any, uh, for example, sexual urges, we take that and we nail it to the cross and say, flesh, you die right now, right? And it will come back, right? But we nailed it again to the cross, to the cross of Christ, right? And that's the real walk of a Christian. You deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow him. Anything that is uh, sinful, anything that is outside of the design of what God originally intended, because that's what sin is. Sin is anything that is outside of the design that God originally intended, right? So anything that's like um, an abnormality in human nature, anything that is uh, contrary to purity, right? That, that's what God considers sin, right? So the word of God says, come out from among them and be ye separate. Come out from among the world, from among the unbelievers, from among the lukewarms and be ye separate, right? What does it mean? When you consecrate yourself, you're setting yourself apart for God and being intentional with showing God that you exclusively belong to Him and not to the world, not even to yourself. We belong to Him before we even belong to ourselves, guys. And that's what it is to have a more intimate relationship with, with Father God, is saying, God, I don't even belong to myself. I belong to you first because you made me. Uh, Colossians, or I believe Galatians, also talks about the living sacrifice. Right, we are a living sacrifice. Right, we resemble Christ. Christ came to be sacrificed as as an atonement for our sins. Right, and we're right to we're we're supposed to follow Christ in in everything that He did. Okay, so also almost done with consecration, but when you consecrate, you're being intentional with leaving behind the things and mentalities of the world to pursue the heart of God. Since when you repent and turn to God, when you're born again. You begin to grow with the mind of Christ, right? So let me give you all a little bit of, of, um, of how I came to the faith. Not the story, but the process, right? I came to the faith. I grew up in church. Most of you all know already. I grew up in church all my life. Uh, since I was young, my parents have been met at church. They got married in church. Assemblies of God also. But my whole life, I was a lukewarm Christian, right? I even played in the worship team. I would get off and say bad words, guys. I was, I was a lukewarm. Uh, five years ago is when I truly decided, you know what, God? I give you my life. But the, how that came to be was that somebody came up to me, and uh, I was going through something, right? But the person that came up to me told me the entire gospel. He, they didn't just tell me, Jesus loves you. I already knew that. But when they said, Jesus loves you, I'm like, okay, Jesus loves me, so I can keep doing what I'm doing. I can keep being lukewarm. I can keep um, doing this and that outside of church. I can keep saying bad words, watching whatever I want to watch, you know? Jesus loves me anyways, right? He'll forgive me, right? I can take advantage of the grace. You know, that's the way that I used to think. But... Um, with, uh, with what was happening with me, uh, I really needed God's help. And um, the person that came up to me and ministered to me at that very moment told me, repent of your sins 
and turn to God, right? What I was not, well, I was probably told, but it just went over my head. Repentance was necessary for the whole, for the end 20, I don't know 100%, right? But the way that I've experienced it and the, the way that I've remained in the faith is because I repented of my sins. And I'm like, you know what, God, whatever it is, I don't agree with it anymore. I don't agree with the world. God, take me out of the world. I want to belong to you. I want you to take care of me. Shield me like it says in Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the, in the presence of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Guys, that divine protection is legit, guys. That's legit divine protection, guys. Uh, there's angels right here in this room. We don't even see them, guys. There's different frequencies, rays of light that our eyes do not capture, but they're here, guys. Um... Fasting suppresses the flesh and builds your spirit. So we are, are naturally carnal people, right? Outside of Christ, we are carnal people. Um, afuera de Cristo somos gentes carnales. Um, o sea, somos, somos carne. No, no de cuero, ¿verdad? El, no, el, el, el cuerpo no es malo, pero es la naturaleza que está en el cuerpo. It's the nature that's in, in your body, your sinful nature. That's, what, that's, what, um, that's what's contrary to God. The sinful nature, our sinful nature, my desire to sin, my desire to, to lust, my desire for pride, my desire for arrogance, my desire to say, you know what, I know better, you know, God, thank you, but I know what I, what I should do, I know what I'm about, you know, that's pride right there, and that's, that's part of the flesh, guys, um, so when you fast, you're basically saying, it's the best way to humble your soul, when you fast, okay, so let me, let me, so, I'm sorry, because I get too ahead of myself, and I'm like, okay, let me, let me gather my thoughts, when you fast, what is fasting? You're, you're putting away food. You're putting, you're, uh, you're training your bowl of soup for a blessing. You're humbling your soul. It's a supernatural thing, guys, that I cannot explain by physical means, right? But you suppress the flesh and it builds your spirit. Jesus said when he was praying in the Mount of the Olives, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So when you fast, you suppress your spirit and your spirit man builds as in the... You, you become less and, be, and he becomes more. When you're intentional about fasting and prayer, the word says to draw near to God and he will draw near to you. In other words, when you seek him, he will always be found. And I myself have had experiences where I'm like, God, where are you? I'm seeking you. I'm intentional. I'm, gone. I'm, I'm fasting. I'm praying. Um, but the word of God also says, let God be true and every man a liar. So it doesn't matter what I say, guys. If the word of God says that seek and you shall find it is seek and you shall find, right? It doesn't matter what anybody has experienced. Go with what the word of God says always. So when you're intentional about seeking God, it's like if, if um, we're playing hide and seek, right, in the most adorable way, and I'm hiding in some room, and I stick my foot out because I want my son to find me. I don't have a son, right? But for example, if I had a son, I'd be like, okay, come look for me. And I stick my foot out. I want my son to find me. That's the way God is. That's God's heart. God's like, I want you to seek me. So you know what? Let me let me let me stick my foot out. I want you to find me, Mijo. You know that's that's God's heart. That's that's in that way God wants us to seek Him daily, every day, right? So and you will always be more perceptive of God and of supernatural things when you fast, guys. I cannot tell you enough from personal experiences how many supernatural things God has demonstrated to me because I I uh, uh, because of fasting, guys. Because again, you're suppress you're suppressing the flesh. Your carnal mind, your carnal nature is suppressed. So when you, you suppress your carnal nature, you become more spiritually sensitive. Um, so it's the same thing. You're strengthening your spirit and you're suppressing the flesh, right? The Bible says that the carnal man cannot receive the things of God. So fasting and prayer helps with that issue, guys. Um, it, it turns us from carnal people to spiritual the more, you know, we're already spiritual because we have the Holy Spirit, but our spiritual perception. Uh, when you fast, you're putting aside food for spiritual benefits. We already covered that, guys. You're training your blessing for a bowl of soup. I mean, you're, you're, I'm so sorry. You're training the bowl of soup for a blessing. It's an exchange. You're saying, God, you know what? I'm desperate. I need this. Or you just want a fellowship with God, the Holy Spirit. You're like, you know what, God? I'm putting that aside. I'm putting down my pride. I just want to be with you, God. doesn't matter. What it takes, God. I'm desperate for you. I want you. I desire you. I'm hungry for you. You're training your physical hunger for spiritual hunger. Fasting, depending on the context, shows God's desperation. If it's genuine, God's heart can be moved. If there are sinful motives behind your prayer requests, God will not answer them. Either you're, like it says it in James 
3. James 3, it says, uh, either you're faithful to the world or you're faithful to God. You cannot be uh, both. Because James was talking about like, hey, you do not have because you don't ask. And when you ask, you have, you have sinful motives. So because you have sinful motives, God sees that and he says, it's not beneficial for you. It's like, for example, if I ask God, God, give me a million dollars. And God says, why? So I can blow in on, on cigarettes, prostitutes, and, and you can do all this and that? No. No. I mean, not that I will ask for that, right? Not that I will use it like that, right? For, for example, right? If God sees that you have motives that are worldly, carnal, you're like, I want money. Why? So you can waste it on your cars and build your ego, and then you lose your soul. You know, God sees the result of, of what we ask for. He sees the end result. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. He sees it all. He knows it all. So when, sometimes when you're at a point of desperation, guys, like I personally have been there where I'm like, God, I'm desperate for this. I need your help. I need breakthrough. Uh, not just prosperity, guys, but just, just like I need, I, need, I need breakthrough in, in a certain area of my life. God, like I don't know what I'm going to do. Like I'm desperation, right? And I'm like, God, you know what? I'm going to humble myself. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fast for X amount of days, three days a week. But God, I, 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 I want to see you. And God is faithful. God is faithful, right? Um, it says it in, in Daniel 10. Uh, Daniel initiated. It wasn't a Daniel fast, right? He wasn't. Um, people call it the Daniel fast. But it's not really a fast. It's just something that Daniel consecrated. But that's a different thing, right? From the first day that Daniel humbled himself, the Bible says that God has sent an angel. And the prince of Persia, which was a principality over Persia, was giving, I don't know if it was Michael or Gabriel, Warfare in the second heaven, right? Daniel 10 is right there. Um, but the Bible says that from the first day that Daniel had humbled himself, God has sent an answer to his prayers. They were just delayed because of the warfare in the second heaven, right? But God is faithful when you decide to humble yourself and decide to be like, you know what, God, I need your help. I'm going to sacrifice. I'm not sacrifice, but I'm going to put away food because I, I, I need your help. Like desperation, right? Um, so that's another, that's another benefit of, of fasting. So fasting and prayer is one of the platforms that God uses to build a relationship with us. It's a spiritual thing which can't be explained by physical things. You are crucifying your flesh so that your spirit can get strong. Uh, we, already, we already mentioned this earlier. Uh, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Your spirit always wants to get close, um, more and more time with God, whether alone or in fellowship with, with the brethren, Right? Um, so your spirit's always willing to, to desire the spiritual things of God, but our, our carnality, our, our, um, our flesh wants entertainment, wants distraction, wants, you know what, I can pray, uh, but you know what, they're kind of having a cookout over here, so you know what, I might pray just later, I'm going to put that priority first, right? Uh, so, I mean, that could be one of the things that the flesh can get in the way, right? But you can also pray while you're there, right? In your mind, meditate on the Word of God. Uh, just fellowship with the Holy Spirit, right? So another benefit of fasting and prayer is you can cast out stronger and higher levels of demonic and unclean spirits. Because again, it's more of him and less of you. You're suppressing your flesh. He, I must become less so he can become more. So Jesus was trying to cast out a demon out of this boy, but the disciples could not because of their faith, right? So Jesus said this type of demon, meaning there's hierarchies and there's rankings in the demonic realm, um, so this type does not come out except by prayer and fasting. But you're not praying and fasting to the demon. You're praying and fasting, right, so that he can become more and us less, right? It's more, it's by the finger of God, those things go out. So more, more of him, less of us. Uh, also, when you're dealing with stubborn demonic entities, fast and pray to cast it out, right? It's the same concept. And it's not just a one-way conversation, and it's not a ritual, right? Uh, while you're fasting and praying, let God minister to our hearts also. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, you can pray while you're doing everyday things. When you're on the job, when you're driving, when you're, you, you know, uh, 9 to 5, school, whatever it is, right? Fast and pray. Meditate, walk around. I personally go to the beach and, and I just, I pray there. I, I just talk to God. In silence, or I talk to God like when I'm talking to you right now. I'm like, Abba, you know, like, why, why this and that? Or, right, I give my concerns, or I just talk to them. I'm like, well, this happened. I mean, he already knows, right? But, I mean, that's, that's a relationship that David had with God, right? If you look at David, you're like, David, how? Like, how, how did David communicate with God? He spoke to him like he was, a, like if he was right there, guys. Um, 
So let God minister to you while you're practicing and praying, you know. Um, he wants to talk to us. It's not just about us talking to him. It's about him also talking to us. Let him minister to your heart. Uh, you'll be more perceptible of God's voice and even hear his heart if you seek him genuinely during your time of prayer and fasting. Fasting without prayer or fasting without fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit is just a diet. It will benefit you more than the physical realm. So if, if I'm intentional about prayer and fasting, I'm gonna set aside, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set aside a time to you know what, I'm gonna put food away for a little bit, a few days, maybe a week, or however long the Holy Spirit puts in your heart. And you're gonna be like, you know what, God, like I'm gonna I'm gonna spend some time with you. I'm gonna just sit down somewhere, or I'm gonna drive, take a drive, or or go camping or or go fishing or just something, God, and I'll, I just want to talk to you. I just want to talk to you. Is that is that simple, guys? You know, like we don't have to get on our knees all the time. Though there is significance in praying on our knees because it shows God our humility and desperation when it's genuine. But God just wants us to have fellowship with Him in simple terms. Adam walked with God in the garden. He walked with Him. He was Adam wasn't on his knees, but he walked with Him in the garden, and he was still fellowshipping with Him. Fasting and prayer moves God's heart because it shows desperation and your humility to give up food and your physical necessities and go before the throne of God, right? Um, I just want to throw this out there, right? Don't fast and pray if you have a medical condition, if you have diabetes, or if you have, uh, well, something that, you know, you know you have, right? Consult your doctor before you, you go ahead and, and fast and pray. Um, God is merciful and, and he understands. Um, but, I mean, the most important thing about fasting and prayer is just is fellowship with God. You just fellowship with God, you fellowship with the Holy Spirit, and, and you just spend time with Him. Um, we are to be like Jesus Christ in every aspect. That is the whole reason of why we fast and pray. You want to be more of Him, less of you. So just because we don't see results in the physical realm doesn't mean there, there are no results, right, guys? Sometimes things manifest first in the physical realm before they manifest in the in the in the spiritual realm. Sorry, before they manifest in the physical realm. So. And that was the message that I have for you today, right? Just the benefits of fasting and prayer. If you want, I'll send you all the PDF file. I have the whole thing written here. And then I use ChatGPT. I ain't about that. I'm like, Holy Spirit, you go ahead <laughs> and you give me the word. I write it on my notes. That's just the way I remember things. Because if you put me on the pulpit without me like having my points organized, I, I forget. I forget what I'm going to speak about. And at my house, I'm like, okay, Holy Spirit, I feel strong in this. And then I get here and I'm like, what? <laughs> but um, if you want, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll post it on, on uh, I'll send it to you if you all want. Um, but that was pretty much it, guys. Um, don't underestimate the power of prayer, guys. Prayer is powerful. Prayer moves mountains. I'm going to be honest with you all, guys. Today, I woke up and uh, I asked God for, for something, right? It's, it's a little personal, but I want to assure you all the result of it. Because uh, I was reading Hebrews, and, and Hebrews was saying how Elijah... Even though he had physical limitations, you know, he, he was a man. He was a man, so he felt things that men feel, right? But even then, when, when he prayed with genuine faith, things happened. Fire fell from heaven. You stopped rain for three years. And I'm like, I mean, I've, I just asked the Lord for something. And I'm like, God, X, you know, like if, this, if you send rain, it's because X. And if you don't, it's because X. But I was genuine. I'm like, God, I'm, I'm desperate for an answer. Guys, it rained. <laughs> it's hot outside. And I was, I was like, I was driving home and I heard, tss, tss. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, that's, that's you. That's you. You know, like, that's, that's, that's all you, God. You know, and I, I was like, God, wow. It's not me. But I'm like, prayer, prayer changes things. Even though you might be like, God forgot. God, God does not forget, guys. Our God's answers are yes, no, or not yet. And we, the Bible says God will never withhold a good thing from us. So you ask God for things that God's like, it's not, it's not for your benefit. It will not benefit you either now, and it might benefit you now, but it will not benefit you later. So no for your own good. So prayer is powerful. Pray every day. Pray in the spirit. Be genuine with God. Spend time with him. Build your relationship with him. The Holy Spirit is the one that builds it. The Holy Spirit is the one that draws us to Him. So if you ever feel a desire to pray, that 100% is God drawing you to Himself. That's God saying, I want to spend time with you. I want to spend time with you. You might be like, oh, it might just be my own religiosity. No, no. 
No, the Pharisees prayed, but the Pharisees prayed with motives to, to be seen. They had pride. They were like, oh, I am, I am the man of God. You know, like they had their chest up and they were like, I, I am the man of God. You know, like, you know nothing. For example, right? But that's not how, why the Christian prays. The Christian prays because of the motive to want to talk with God. Because they were like, God, I want your heart. I want to be with you.